All right, what's going on you guys? It's your boy three stacks in this thing baby representing team kings of games And today I'm gonna be showcasing you guys a different variant on Zephyrus One that my friend Aaron black actually um well he plays different He plays like jet synchron and a bunch of other stuff, but I'm showing you guys a synchro variant of Zephyrus So like this is my list currently the one that I've been um like playing and this is another Zephyr list that I'm going to show you guys. It's a 55 card deck. Don't knock it till you try it. So I'm going to go over this list really fast. Like you guys know I'm a Zephyr enthusiast. I think this deck is like super good. In fact, it's one of the best decks like ever. I've got more more tops with this deck than any other deck. And uh, my knowledge with Zephyr I think is at least um, proficient. Uh, the way this deck functions, the way it works is just so different from any other pendulum deck. Um, you guys are gonna see this list. Um, I'm gonna talk about it show you guys some crazy crazy combos and then uh, like some really good duels So uh, going into the list. Um, I play driver for the cypher and gear gamma package uh, Triple anger translator one Nibiru one Kaku for the calamities combo I play gate zero because I play dark arm dark arms insane in this deck like literally He's just like one of the best starters like plus one get a scale and also you can make gallant granite Or you can also just do a link play before you pin them summon uh, and then we play uh, three Zephyr News, the lifeblood of the deck. Um, so uh, the reason why I'm not explaining cards the same way normally is because this is not my first. Um, this is you know this is not like the first Zephyr deck I've shown on this channel. So if you guys are watching this, you guys have probably already seen my other Zephyr content. So you guys know how I explain these cards. But this is like if this right here, like Neo and Anger Translator, are the two cards you want to make sure you're getting. If you don't have him, you still prioritize him because he still gets you him at the end of the day. So make sure you always pin them some Zephyr Neo. If you haven't seen Anger Translator, search out Nine Pillars instead of Divine Strike so you can Nine Pillars him and search Providence so Providence gets you Zephyrath because you're going to be able to grind. Like this is part of the grind game with this deck. Once you establish a board, Zephyrath is a consistent follow up every single turn. Follow up, follow up, follow up. You don't even have to have any cards in hand. Zephyrath staying on the field is a follow up, keeping your skills protected. So you just keep sending Zephyr News or anything you need every turn. So you can summon Zephyr News, search, and keep your engine going. So like, no matter what board you make with this deck, even if it's like an insanely unbreakable board, you always have a follow up. Even if you vomit out your whole hand, follow up because Zephyrath is in scale. So this card's like the best scale in the game, and this deck plus is like just ridiculously off of so little. And then I play two Cytons. Um, the two Dark Worms is part of like the the gate like the gates are on the dark, the Dragon Shrine package. I play Core because this card is actually super strong. It's a searchable um skill off of Gallant Granite if I already have um Anger Translator. It's also a high scale. It's a level four and it allows me to summon my level four uh, scales from Pinlum Zone so I can make rank fours on my Pinlum summons and chain blocks. So Zephyr Core is like super strong. I see a Zephyr list that play uh, Zephyr and Pilica before they play core i play core before pilica honestly he's way better uh and then two thubins thubins insane especially when you could chain blocks so like when you go second with this deck you're basically make sure that you can just get your scale as long as you can scale you can break your opponent's board by chain blocking with thubin and cards like uh Cyton. and you can still go into access code so like with this deck if your opponent has only monster negates or like one or two spell trap negates you could bait the spell or trap negates more than likely with the super gas hand and um, also you normally make a rank four before pendulum summoning so like if they have back rows you can just make tornado if they have monster negates you bait it with gallon granite because like a lot of people think i'm playing rock when i just start out with gallon granite for some reason especially when i do um dragon shrine with pet like then it just like it looks like rock it just like they just probably think oh like shrine is just like he's just trying to turbo gallon granite so like this card normally baits like opelousa minimum um, also keep in mind for like um, arc light it's super easy you're just attacking over it like with all these good cards like it's super strong it's like chain blocking with Dubin is how you can out cards going second um, Wendy's for the grind she's like super strong this and him together is electromite without the draw this is literally electromite all the utility that electromite has send to extra deck and then add this right here that's electromite so electromite's banned but my pendulum deck is the, still the only pendulum deck that has the same utility as electromite literally um to send and add three zephraxis because he's super important and because this is like um, a halkyrie fibrax build like you guys see i don't normally play zephyrs this way but like well in the past i have but um for this build it's working good i think i might convert to this one because this one's been more successful not to say my other build wasn't like incredible because it was insane this one just does more with less cards 
the other one to get like crazy boards like I need a little bit more but this one does more with less cards which means like I can open more hand traps and it's still fine but like three of Raxi's staple and then for the hand traps of choice I don't actually play Imperm instead I play um, all these tuners the reason why because tuner access in this deck is just insane so like three ash three ogres and three gamma so ogre gamma is also going to counter the um the zexal lock and ash and ogre or combo pieces you guys are going to see in my combo tutorials um where i'm synchro summoning with these pendulum summoning them and using them to actually synchro summon and link summon to hulk so these are combo pieces and the same thing with gamma you guys will see a duel where i was playing against adam Emancipator. i gammed him and i literally so um i gammed him no, 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 I think it was, um, Zexel. I'm tripping, yeah, my bad. It was a Zexel, I think, a Zexel Sky Striker player. So, basically, I gammaed his, his Zexel, and then used the Gamma and the Driver to go into Hulky Fireback. So, I'm literally baiting Zexel, and then another hand drop off one Gamma. So, like, this card in the Synchro build is insane, because Hulk is a card. So, like, you're literally, it, it's just, like, so strong. Um, something else, too, with Synergy with Gamma with Lambda, which I do now, is, um, when I gamma my opponent on their on my turn with lambda up, I link with the um, or even if I didn't have lambda up, if I just like get lambda, I link with the driver and something else. Put driver in grave. Let gamma banish itself. So then on end phase, lambda searches another copy of gamma, and I can use it to bring the driver from grave. So I use a second gamma, and obviously I can do it with monsters because lambda. So like that's another big brain play you can do with gamma. So when you resolve gamma on your turn. You're either going Hulkery Fibrex combo or you're gonna gamma your opponent again on their turn. So like gamma is like insane and the way this deck uses gamma is like is literally a hand trap that's a combo piece. That's why if you guys see I don't play Imperm because I all my hand traps are combo pieces. So like I want extra synergy in case I break on too many of these, I use them to combo off. And then I play one O-Lion. Uh, instead of playing Jet Synchron, the reason why I don't like Jet Synchron in this deck is because it requires a discard. And if my opponent hand traps me, I go neck two instead of just one for one. So I decided to play a different engine and I like it way better in this deck because it also gives me follow-ups. Um, so I play O-Lion and Despot 1, which are going to be primary um, targets for um, Hulk and Aurodon. I'm not doing a crazy combo with like um, Link Cross formula synchron i'm conserving extra deck space to just do a very very simple ardon combo with savage and arc light which is still really strong because i do it before i pendulum summon a lot of the times you can also do it after pendulum summoning just using zephraxi targeting any zephra make it a tuner and that's your whole combo so like you normally have like minimum savage arc light counter trap which is super strong like sometimes you have savage arc light dweller counter trap and dwellers just game already um, so I play lefty and righty. The reason why I chose these over jet is like you guys have to hear me out I know a lot of people like jet and tuning, but for me in this deck um, I will literally play righty Normal summon him. He will get ashed people actually hand trap this That's why I like this better because he gets ashed Valored or imperm then I just pendulum summon and then I do the combo anyways. Also opening him with dragon shrine So if I activate dragon shrine get dark worm get gate normal righty they Ash, Valor, or Imperm, which people still do for some reason. Um, also, keep in mind, too, like, let's say they don't Ash, Valor, or Imperm it. I can also just use this to summon out Lefty, make her a level 3, Synchro to Arclight. And then I can still Pendulum Summon Zephraxi and then do basically the Halkyrie Farbrex combo, but I'll have Arclight up already. So, like, if they don't Ash, Valor, or Imperm it when I have um, the Dragon Shrine, then I'm already playing through a hand trap because I literally synchro to arc light. So like this is also better than jet because I can put up a negate early on in my combo. Like so this is just my preference. Like everybody's on jet so much for like any deck they splash on um, like how how terrible cards. Not to say people don't play this, but this is not as popular and I just like it because even when it gets interrupted, like that's what I'm saying with this and shrine, because like if they ask Villa or Imperment, you still basically go into um Hulky Fibrax with a searched out scale so you have like four cards in hand you already baited one hand trap you go into Hulk you bait two hand traps if they Valor Imperm Nibiru mainly if they have Nibiru you're baiting it now because like this swarms 
and then you just peel them summon after they Nibiru you. And also something really cool that you can do is you can summon True King of All Calamities after your opponent Nibiru's you because of the um, Righty Driver combo with Shrine, which also means like they can't Nibiru you again, so they have to deal with the um, the Calamities because they hand trap you, they Nibiru you, and then you summon Calamities anyways. I think I have a replay of that happening actually. Um, I have to double check, but like yeah, I just like this better. And also on your next turn, you just banish this and search another one. And it's literally just a follow-up monster. It just gives you an extra monster for you to pillum summon. That could be the difference between you making access Kotaku or not. So I just like this engine. You guys don't have to play it, but I explain how powerful it is. Uh, three shrines and then terraforming. Three providence. Like this card is like you couldn't ask for a better rota. Well, like there are better rotas I think, but like this one is just like one of the best. Uh, one foolish for the four shrines because shrine is just insane in this deck. Foolish has other utility because I. You can dump O-Lion for an extender. You can also dump um, Core. I actually did that. I dumped Core to special Zephyr Neo for my Pillum Zones to put them up so I can like start grinding with them. Uh, three Oracles. <laughs> like this builds about five effects, you guys. It's crazy. Um, one of each trap for right now. I side deck the extra copies because I'm already playing so many risky cards in the deck. You don't want to draw a hand with literally no skills. But like if you draw him with no skills, sometimes that's good because you'll have like hand traps and then just like the one card combo, which is so good. So it's like you almost like you're playing like Synchro Eldritch, but just in a different way. Uh, and then I played three pets. The reason why I chose pet over the Magellines because my normal summon actually goes to tuners, either Righty or like Asher Ogre. So I just have pet because I. Like, this is a really good hand like this is a hand that like like this is a three card combo that baits like multiple hand traps dragon shrine pet and righty so you shrine for dark worm get gate zero special pet overlaying to gallon granite hand trap right there normal righty drivey if they hand trap it they hand trap it if they don't this is the funny thing they they literally have to because if they don't i just summon arc light and that means now i have a negate for their um their other hand trap so oftentimes if they're smart um, hand trap on righty, so hand trap on righty, hand trap on gallant. That's two hand traps, which is sad that they have no choice. That's why this is superior to jet in a sense. It's not as consistent because, like, jet at least if they have a hand trap, you still keep Hulk on field, which means they could go into link cross. But I don't play link cross, so I don't care about that. But like, so when you have shrine, pet, and righty, that's the same. Like, they hand trap, um, gallant. Then you normal righty, they hand trap it. Like this is if it's not gamma, for example. Then after they hand trap twice, you link both of these into help you Fibrax. And you're still basically gonna be able to pill them summon after you do the help combo. So if they Nibiru you, then you play through three hand traps and then you just pill them summon. Like Endymion, Endymion can't get hand trapped twice and then Nibiru. And then keep going. Cause like they get Nibiru when they pill them summon. But this deck can get hand trapped twice. And then it can get Nibiru, and then it can pillum summon after. So like this deck ceiling is just like ridiculous, and the proof's in the pudding. You guys will see the replays. Uh, but that's why I chose the three pets over the um, Magellines, because she's just a free summon, and also Gallant is really important. Like so that I can search out my Anger Translator, or if I already have him and I have scales, I search out Nib. You guys will see another combo where I end up with Calamities, Counter Trap, Borlo Savage, Arclight, and Nib literally calamities counter trap savage arc nib like there's no way i'm losing like i just can't lose i can't go otk because of calamities and like literally there's like no way like they, they just can't bro like they just can't and i have counter trap for dark ruler so like there's like i don't know like spear mode you're still under calamities like it just it doesn't matter it's super duper strong and you still have anger translator so you have follow-ups like the boards this deck it just makes it crazy like even with spear mode like evenly matched it wouldn't work because you have counter trap dark ruler doesn't work as counter trap if you have spear mode dark ruler it still doesn't work like it's just insane like you could literally super poly if i just call dark for some reason and you're still under the the um the lingering effect of calamity so like it's just insane uh you guys see set rotation in dragon ravine um, so Dragon Ravine, because like Dark Room is super important to get access to, this also baits an interrupt, so then you could just follow up with one card combo, bait another interrupt, and you can still play, um, which is really, really good. That's why I like Pet, because like, this baits interrupt, this baits interrupt, and then you just reveal Pet special, go full combo, and then Set Rotation plays around Impermanence and Evenly Match. So if I open this, I activate it first before I do anything. So that way if my opponent has Imperm, which is better than Valor in some builds, unless they're doing like Hulk into Selene, like Access Code plays. Um, so like 
a lot of play players just do Imperm instead because it also stops the um, Zexal lock. So like when I open set, I play around Imperm and Evenly, and also I, I can give them Oracle if I want. So then they can't play any field spells, like which is good against decks that need field spells. So like the synergy and the ceiling of set rotation is just is super fired, you guys. And the fact that you counter Imperm is just insane. So like set rotation is super fire. Uh, this is just an active combo piece. For the extra deck, um, Chao Feng, I beat Adam Emancipators with this, you guys will see the replay, this this card is just insane. It beats Adam Emancipator, it beats Medulches. Um surprisingly enough, it does win against Zephyr matches, which is funny. Um, other Earth decks, any Earth deck basically, Zodiac, so that's the funny thing, Zodiac, Medulche, and also um, the Rock deck are all really, really strong Earth decks, and this is just like an auto win against them. They just can't activate their effects as skill drain. Uh, Ravenous for the Calamities play, Savage, Arclight, um, True King of All, Chlamydia, Gallant Granite, Tornado, and Dweller, the three rank fours of choice. I'm thinking about Baguska because like you can summon Baguska going second to turn off uh, Dragoon. Like that's something else, people that play Dragoon Turbo, like you can just summon Baguska in defense, turn off the Dragoon, and um, which is really, really strong. Like I feel like just turning off Dragoon is super duper fire because then I can link summon into like any link that's big enough like I can literally just pendulum summon and then link off the um the Baguska and just like out the Dragoon like that's one way I don't know I'm just like kind of brainstorming honestly then we have Axis Code, um, Opelousa, Zephyr Metaltron, Auradon, Lambda, um, Hulk and also IP for the links so it's a pretty um, decent amount of links XYZs and Synchros that's really all I do with this deck uh, for summoning conditions and then I play two more nibs because I'm in deck one because like I could search it off combos Which is really strong when you put up a super fire board and you have a nib that your opponent knows you have Now they have no choice but to play around it because they see it in your hand So it's really not that bad to give them that information because now they literally play so frigid They play frigid because like how are you gonna break my board without so many five times? And then like if you do break my board, I'm just gonna nib before you put up a negate which is crazy so like you just win. It's this deck is just really strong. Uh, Path is like one of the best floodgates. Like this deck puts up floodgates. Like Chalfane's a floodgate. Uh, Calamities is a floodgate. Dwellers is a flood. Dwellers kind of like a floodgate. Um, Path is a floodgate. It's just, whew, this deck is good. Uh, three Imperms, more ways to out the Zexal Lock. Uh, one more of each of the Zephyr Traps and nine Pillars. They're really good. I think I might play Griffin because Griffin resets these, and that's really good for the grind because these cards. This is what makes your deck so good, also, the traps. Three evenly and three dark roller. Dark roller, because rock decks are starting to, like, not play the, um, the buster lock anymore, and then evenly is just, like, pfft. Like, bro, one card for five, you guys. Like, evenly is super duper good. So, first, I'm gonna go to, um, combos. Let me show you guys what this deck does. The potential of these boards here. So, I showed you guys other Zephyr combos in the last video. Um, Zephra. Let me see. Is this Zephra best deck combo? Is this with the new cards? Yeah, Zephra best deck combo. Okay, so this combo, as you guys can see, my hand's kind of meh. I have a foolish profit. So, like, I have a way to play it through. So, like, if this gets interrupted, like, let's say Gallant Granite gets interrupted, Providence gets interrupted, I feel like it's still fine. I have Ash and Despot ones, but we'll see how it plays out. So press one. This is just a test hand, anyways. I'm just thinking about that. So combo number one. So foolish for Dark Worm, and then I activate Providence to try to bait. I'm just pretending. Then I normal summon the Despot because like I already have access to um to Zephrath. So I'm gonna try to bait some hand traps before I go into Zephrath because getting my engine online with Zephrath is more important than a combo that puts up negates. Because Zephrath and Zephyr Neo carry my deck for their whole duel. Two negate boards don't carry me for the whole duel. They won't last. So I'm just like thinking for the long run. That's why I do this early instead of later. So I summon Rydy Driver, Lincoln Ardon. Because like I open the Despot one. Then I just bring him out. So you guys are going to see like this is what I'm doing before I pendulum summon. Arc Light Savage. It's going to get better though. This is just icing on the cake. Like, there's nothing really to say about the combo. Then I activate Oracle, go into um, Anger Translator, use his effect, send Zephyr Niu, and then I Pendulum Summon Zephyr Niu and Ash Blossom. Why did I do that? Uh, I'm gonna get Counter Trap. I go Ravenous. 
because I already activated Providence this turn. So this is Calamities, Arclight, Savage, Counter Trap, and you guys saw my opening hand wasn't even that great. It really wasn't that great. Like the opening hand was not like super gas. I had like two starters. Two starters got me all this, you guys. Calamities, Arclight, Savage, Counter Trap. Like this is insane. And that's Zephyr best deck combo. Um, Zephyr, I can't lose combo. I named these like kind of oh, because I have Nib in hand. Okay, so I have Dragon Trine, Terraforming, Dark Worm, Ogre. This hand doesn't look like it's gonna end on the board that it ends on. So we're, I'm gonna show you guys. So Dragon Trine, Dark Worm, Dark Worm effect, effect to search gate zero. And then I think I normal, yeah, then I go into Gallant. Gallant? If he gets interrupted, I have Terra for Oracle so I can still get um, Anger Translator. So I like that I can always bait and interrupt before I go in for most instances. And as you guys see, Oracle searched out the um, Zephraxi. You guys are gonna see. So this is where I was talking about where the hand traps are combo pieces because Ghost Ogre and Asher Tuners. So instead of keeping it in hand to interrupt my opponent, I instead just go like super duper aggressive and put out this board right here. I put out Ogre for a reason because she's a tuner. So I use the Fraxi and Zephyr Nihu to go into the Calamities combo. And I have to summon Calamities first in order to do the Auradon combo because I need four zones literally in the main zone. So like you guys see, I have to summon Calamities first. Which is actually kind of cool because then like if anything happens to this board, I haven't summoned Hulk or anything. So I still have Hulk for later. And then I go into Hulk, Despot 1. So now I'm going to end on a similar board as the last one, except it's going to be Boiled Savage, Arclight, Calamities, Counter Trap, and Nibiru. So there's no way I'm losing. Like, I have... It's coming from everywhere. It's so like, you have yeah, Dark Ruler, I have the counter for it. If you have, like, um, I don't know, like, Kaijus, I still have Hand Traps and Counter Traps, and you're under Lingering Calamities. So, like, no matter what, I don't get LTK. This being there, just Zephyrath being there as a scale is a follow-up every turn. So like I just th that that's crazy. Um, let's see Zephra options combo. Oh Zephra new wave combo. Let's see that. Pause. Look at my hand. It's really it it doesn't look like wow. Like the hand doesn't look wow. It's like okay this is not. That's the thing too because I'm playing pendulums. Pendulum players will look at this and be like that's not a scale. That's not a scale. That's not a scale. Like this hand is weak. Nah, look at it, bro. So. Dragon Shrine into um, Gate. I mean, Dark Worm, Dark Worm for Gate. Special Pet. That's why, again, I sacrificed uh, Magellan for Pet. Just three pets instead. Gallant Granite. So they, they interrupt Gallant Granite. Ooh, me, I at least could steal um, Normal Summon Despot 1 and go into that combo. So, like, I don't, like, I always have a way to beta interrupt, which I really like. So then I'm gonna go into the similar combo as before. the new wave combo so I'm just gonna do this is standard it's more simplistic and it requires less extra deck slots um, it requires Savage, Arc, Aradon, and um, Hawkey Fibrax so it's like four cards versus like Formula Synchron, Barricade Blocker, Link Cross, Marcher like that's like four extra cards in my extra deck I'm not trying to do all that that's just way too much like I just want these two simple negates to just add to my board so like my help combo is not really overdone but i like it that way it's like because that's how zephyrs are they're not an overdone deck um and then i summon zephyr new nine pillars like i have nine pillars goes into a follow-up uh, oh snap and then i have nib in hand so like i have um borla savage arc like counter trap nib so like i feel like i just don't lose um zephyr op combo Play. so oh my goodness look at this hand uh, so I go shrine shrine is just an insane starter dark worm normal dark worm get gallant anger translator go into Zephyr Neo activate gate zero pendulum summon Zephyr Neo ogre and also core so I can go into lambda so I go into Lambda just like so I can have Gammas to make sure that Hawkeye Fibrax is safe. So like if they Gamma me, so like let's say um, they activate a hand trap on Hulk, 
now I can gamma them and then just um, resolve out. Then I can use lambda and um, the gamma and the uh, driver and I go into Opelousa for three and then I continue the Aradon combo under there in the main zone. So like that's why I summon lambda. That's the only reason because like this this hand's more fragile to like combo off. And another thing too is Nibiru is like a thing. So I'm just doing it. It's just like, you know, just something. So Aradon. I'm doing the standard combos. Like I really don't have to explain this. I don't even think people care because a lot of people are really sensitive when it comes to um how few firebacks. Like they don't like anything involving him, so Luckily, I don't make a bunch of content using um, Needle Fiber or Haku Fiber. So my ending board, I have like Lambda with Gamma, Savage, Arclight, Counter Trap, Follow Up off Zephrath. So like I have Hand Trap, Traps, and Monster Negates. So I have interruptions coming from everywhere you could think of. Monster Zone, Spell Trap Zone, Hand. Only thing I'm missing is like Grave, but like still. Um, Zephra Options Combo. So in this combo, as you guys can see, like there's options. So I open three hand traps, which is like, it's not that bad. Like honestly, cause remember hand traps are combo pieces. So press play. I'm gonna go activate Zephrath, send Zephyr Niu, scale Zephraxi. Then I'm gonna pendulum summon Zephyr Niu, search for nine pillars, and then set and pass. The reason why this is options combo is because instead of keeping the four interrupts, well technically five because this um, gets Zephyr War 2, is I also could have just Pilm Summon him, search Providence, Normal Summon Ogre because Ash is superior, Normal Ogre, Link him and the Ogre into Hauke Fibrax, do the Hauk combo, and then I still have like Gamma, Ash, Counter Trap, Borlo, Savage, Arclight. So that's why it's like the options combo because like there's options for what you can make. Um, I have like a lot of combos because I just do a lot of uh, testing with Zephra. Uh, let's go Zephra. Uh, oh yeah, this is versus Invoke Dragoon. I think I lost to the timer in this one. Yeah. So pause. So this one, um, I lost to the timer in game two because so it's kind of unfortunate. So learning from this one. I need to set up my own room and put the timer on like 500,000 minutes or something. So he has a uh, double hand trap, double cyclone, and meltdown. All he needs is that one meltdown to carry him. And I have no hand trap. If I had one hand trap, I stop his only follow up. Oh no, he's top deck in desire. So dang, dang, he nice. So I go shrine to dark worm, dark worm, summon itself, effect, he veilers. I reveal pet, summon her, go into gallant, he veilers that. I think he thinks I'm playing rock because I haven't given off any information on my deck really except like the uh, the dark worm that he veiled. If this right here, this is where the double interrupt wouldn't matter if this instead was righty driver instead of lefty because then I just normal righty and I do the full combo and then he loses because two negates for his desires and his meltdown and then it's over. He loses. But instead of being righty, it was lefty. So this is kind of unfortunate for me. So I pass. He top decks desires. He's gonna melt down first, which is actually kind of smart. Normal Alistair. He's gonna activate summon Makaba and then desires. Even though he doesn't have anything to negate Ash in his hand, he just did it anyways. And then he activates um, Alistair targeting Makaba so that he can summon a second Makaba because now he can summon Calamities. Which is like crazy. The fact that Invoke is summoning Calamities on their like first turn. So he puts me under Calamities, he calls Earth. This is where I know I think he thinks I'm playing Rock. So I use Dark Run's effect for Grave, Normal Pet, Summon Tornado, and Pass. And I'm just like, shoot, it's better than nothing. I should have just left them both in defense though. So then he goes into Alistair, gets Invocation, summons Almirage. Then he goes into another Makaba. Then he goes into Verde Anaconda, summons Jagoon, and that's game. It's over. It's like literally, it's over. I chain as a last effort, I'm just like, I'm going down fighting, <laughs> and it doesn't matter, it's game. So I got waxed, I absolutely got destroyed in that one. Um, game 2, this is what happens when you play Red Eyes, <laughs> Red Eyes Dragoon, you draw the brick sometimes. So my opening hand is War, Trine, Oracle, Terraforming, and O-Line. Uh, this is not that bad, 
because honestly, um, if you don't have a normal summon when you do the Auradon combo, you just normal summon this and you can still make your Savage and everything. Another thing too that you can do to make sure you make Savage if you open O-Line and have to use him is you use Halkui Fibrax because uh, O-Line is going to generate a token which is a machine so how can the token make um, Auradon? So you basically use Halk to summon out a level 2 tuner to replace O-Line so you summon out uh, Gamma off Halk, you go into Auradon, you summon your 3 tokens and then you just use the um, the Gamma and 2 of the tokens to make um, Borload Savage so you still put up Savage. Just like drawing the O-line just kind of cuts off a little bit. So I go Terra to Oracle. Oracle for um, Anger Translator. I activate him first. I'm trying to pretend like I have Gamma. I'm just like trying to bait him. And then uh, Dark Worm, get Gate. Now he knows what I'm playing for sure. I go into Hulk. I do this combo first. And I think I actually just lose to the timer right here, if I'm not mistaken. Then I just like, look at what I'm doing. I'm just like going off. Oh yeah, that's what it is. So like, I'm going for Calamities. So I'm gonna go for Calamities. And, okay, uh, whoops, PC's running low. And then my timer's out. And I wasn't done comboing off. And like, I still search Counter Trap and I have War. He doesn't have an out um, to the Calamities. And like, it just is unfortunate. I lost to the timer. So like, it couldn't even go to game three. Like, that's why I put loss to the timer. Um, but Invoke Dragoon, uh, Invoke Dragoon of the Red Eyes is definitely gonna be a meta. Um, let's go to An Emancipators. I'm going to pause real quick so I can just grab my charger. I'm on 12%. Alright, my bad, you guys. Alright, so... For this game, um... The Adamantia player... The Adamantia player... Summoned a insane board I had no hand traps I still won this duel I feel like the reason why I summoned this duel is because my opponent tried to go for game and him trying to go for game basically just ended up costing him the whole duel um, if I was him I would have just stalled it out and just played the long the long game and just got little pokes for damage until my opponent's life points hit zero but he tried to OTK me and he got punished for that but like honestly if I was him I would have kept the board with all the negates and just kept attacking until uh, my opponent got withered down but I think he just wanted the game to be over so he tried to OTK me so pause real quick uh, this is like a really good opening for him the fact that it's researcher and not one of the other two is kind of bad because I feel like when you play Rock, you don't want to use Researcher earlier because when your opponent Nibiru's you, that's where you use uh, basically Researcher to be able to play through that. And you normally resolve block, go into um, Gigantes and then summon Researcher and you keep playing through the Nibiru. It's like, you don't want to use this early, but I don't think he has a choice right now because of his hand. And I have no hand traps, but I have a good hand. It's just like drawing the gate zero kind of like, ugh. Oh, well, I'm top decking, oh, top decking Anger Translator, which is nice. So, press and play. Uh, he goes Doki Doki Pitch Tackle, going to um, Analyzer. And this, to me, is a misplay. He used Researcher early. I feel like because Nib is so um, like prevalent, when you play Rock, you don't use Researcher early. This, she's like the last of the, the three that you use. You want to use Analyzer. And also, um, what's his name? Man, it's Analyzer and Dagon Seeker first and Researcher after. So it should be like Analyzer, Seeker, and then Researcher. But like he did Seeker like super early. Another thing is like, if he's trying to play around Gamma or Ogre, it doesn't matter because like you can use Analyzer. If I Ogre or Gamma it, you still control Rock anyways. And on top of that, what you do is just activate Sign, Summon him, and go into um, Hulky Fibrax. Like, so it's just like, I don't know, it for me, because the reason why you do that is because you have Weeping Idol in hand. So like, when you go into Hulky Fibrax and that gets Hand Trap, then you summon Weeping Idol, then you summon the Researcher because you don't have another choice. But also just like keeping in mind the fact that um, the sign stacks, which means like the researcher hits, it's gonna hit. So I don't, I don't know. It's just like the way he did it was weird. Like I don't, I think my opponent was just like um, not playing around Nibiru basically. But he does hit. 
he, he I don't think he whips on any of his rocks. Him playing that I think it's a one off drag eye and he summons Arc Light early. So now I'm like, dude, so what are you playing around hand traps but you're like doing the card that really plays around a beaver early? I don't know. Like this is good to start off early. It's just some of his plays were questionable. But again, it's his, he's playing it his way. He's playing Adaman his way. This being in his deck actually came up in the duel because like he ended up putting back his Synchro Monster, his Dragite, the level 8, which is, like, super nice. I think I might want to try out, like, one of these in my Rock deck, because, like, the fact that it recycles one of your win conditions, it's just, like, mm, it's nice. Because you run out of your extra deck really fast. So then he goes Analyzer, so he's just doing all of them. You guys see that Shadal Zephyr Core? It's a Rock, and it's a Shadal. You guys are going to see his Spice, because he does summon Winda against me. Uh, he goes Gallant. He's just doing everything, I feel like, a little bit too early, but because he summoned Arclight, I feel like he's just like, I don't care, I have Arclight, so it doesn't matter. But if I have, like, Nibiru plus, for example, Valor, then it is a problem. But now it ain't, because he has guard, uh, Guardian up. So then he goes into um, Cerberus, he goes Marcher, uh, Marcher, Olan, he's just, like, comboing off, like, um, I don't really have to narrate like this, you guys can just see it happen, it's Rock. He's, he's doing his Rock thing, you guys. And he has block. You guys see he has block. He goes into Savage. <laughs> he goes Gigante Zephyr Core. Which I'm like, okay, now I see the spice. He summons Dweller. Like, Dweller's not really that good, but like I do play um Dark Worm. And then he goes into Winda. Like, so. He had to search this off block because Shadow Fusion only uses the materials from the deck if your opponent has an extra egg monster. So he had to fuse from hand. So he used the Verde Anaconda as the dark and the core, which is a rock, which has synergy with this deck, which is actually, that's what I'm saying. This is spike. So look at his board. Like this is like, whoo. I mean, if this was your Goon of the Red Eyes, it's like basically one extra negate plus like he's a boss monster, but Winda? Like Winda, you guys, like. Now it's going to be even harder to break this board, but like, I feel like, okay, maybe Buster Lock is superior because no extra deck is like, I don't know, maybe Winda actually is better because like, only one special summon compared to just no extra deck is like, dangerous could still swarm the field, you know, and dinosaurs too, dinosaurs don't lose to the Buster Lock, but like with Winda, yeah, they might actually, so never mind, Winda is actually better than the Buster Lock, I'm tripping, she just doesn't play around Dark Ruler. So, swapping around to me, I drew Anger Translator, and uh, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go Terra into Oracle. I activate Oracle. He's going to negate it with Savage. I think he wants Arclight to be like the floodgate of choice to keep banishing cards that get sent. So, he uses Savage. I would have used Arclight because Arclight is so easy to get over. So, then I normal summon Dark Worm, attack over Arclight. So, now both the Omni Negates are gone. So, he can't do anything to my skills because Opelousa, Dweller, and Winda don't hurt my skills. Keep in mind, Pendulum Summoning simultaneously counts as one special summon with Winda, which is crazy because she has the parentheses. So, I could pin summon five under Winda. So, I already dealt with the most important Negates, and I have Divine Strike. I drew it in my opening hand. So this is actually really good for me because um, I can use Divine Strike against him. So like, even though the Adamant board is really strong, because I play Pendulums and a lot of the cards that need to be negated are actually spells and not monsters, these are the only two negates that really matter ultimately for me to be able to establish a board. Like Opelousa and like Dweller or like, you know, if this was um, just the Buster Lock instead, it's like, it's still for a Pendulum deck, even if it's Endymion, your scales are more important than your monster effects. So, it's not always hard to break Adamant boards when you're playing Pendulums. It's very true. Like, it just happens. Uh, then I Pendulum Summon Zephyr Niu. He negates with Oppo. Then I set uh, Shrine and Divine Strike, and I pass. He summons Block. Uh, so, he's actually doing it smart for right now. I think he gets less patient throughout the game. But, like, you don't link anything off. You keep Winda because you're winning with Winda. You keep Savage. You keep Oppo. Dweller is the only thing you could link off. But, like, again, you can only special summon once. So, he just summons out Block, which is smart. And then he goes straight for um, damage. He goes Battle Phase. So, I use Neo. He chains Oppo. I don't use the Divine Strike. 
because I actually, Oppo, I know I can attack over him, so I want to use my Divine Strike on Savage. So I'm hoping next turn, in my mind as I'm playing this, I'm like, I'm going to use um, Zephrath, hoping that he uses Savage so I can chain Strike, Banish Zephyrnew, Sin Zephyrnew, and Oppo, like, is giving me an extra zone. So basically then I can summon out Dark Worm and uh, Zephyrnew, and that way I out the Savage, then I out the Oppo. And then all he has left is um, Block, Winda, Dweller, and he only has three cards left in his extra deck, which are Dragite, Borosword, and Barkeon. So this dude is not playing with Altar guys. He does not want them to do anything. Um, so pressing play, that's my game plan. So depending on what I top deck, I don't get OTK'd. So I top deck into Ogre, which actually I end up pinning him something. He's still chaining Dweller. So I go over Zephyr Niu and uh, Dark Worm. So he doesn't activate Savage. So I'm like, dang, I was trying to bait Savage to use Divine Strike. He didn't even Savage on the um, Providence. I guess, oh yeah, you know something else? He's not playing around Divine Strike because he doesn't know I uh, drew it because I didn't search it. And then I think he didn't negate this because he's like, maybe I'll just negate whatever he searches. So I'm like, all right, fair. I search War. And then here is where I think he just sees he has game. So... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about what he did here because, like, he was winning just by keeping Savage. No, just Savage. Because, like, Dweller doesn't matter. So, like, Savage and Winda. He was winning by keeping Savage and Winda. Um, really, the Savage being in the gate and Winda. But I think for Winda, it's like, um, it doesn't matter too much. Because, like, honestly, Savage and, like, his board wasn't going to be able to break mine because I have Ogre and then Providence protects Zephyr Niu. So. He literally only has one monster that's big enough to beat over Zephyrnew. I banish Providence to protect. And now, because I keep monsters, next turn, I can link or, like, I can pin them summon and just get a bigger wall. So, I think he read into that. And he was just like, forget this, dude. Um, I'm about to OTK you. So, he summons Boros Sword. He activates Block, Chainlink 1, Chainlink 2, Window, which is actually smart. Because I wanted to use Divine Strike on Block. I really did. But he chain blocked with it, so I can't even strike his um his block dragon. And I'm like, dang. He summons his boar sword. I just activate Zephyr where I'm boar sword. I'm not playing with that. And then he gets a bunch of rocks. So I'm not really too scared of these resolving because I see he only has two cards in the extra deck. I'm really what I'm now holding my negate for. Once I read into it, I'm like, he hasn't summoned Dragite. That's the only way he's gonna be able to clear my field. That's the one of the last two in his extra deck. So I'm not using my counter trap on like anything. Like, and I have Ogre on field, so watch this. I Ogre his Analyzer. It still resolves, of course, and he summons, I think, Doki off of it. Mm -hmm. Then he summons uh, Researcher, Researcher Effect. He's like not missing on his rocks. I think like all of his, um, he never whiffed this whole duel. I think he hit every time. He goes into Dragite. Then I chain uh, Divine Strike on Dragite's effect to bounce. Because that's the only way he like clears my field. Because like again, Zephyrnew is 26 with Providence and Grave. People really sleep on just one Zephyrnew being there. And then he summons Dragite. And Dragite being there actually matters. Then he goes into Barkeon. And like, dude, because like he put this back. He put the Dragite back with the baby Dragite. And then I use uh, Zephyr, Anchor Translator to go into another Zephyrnew get pillars past like I'm walled up because like my idea is okay I can't break his board now but it's gonna get to a point where I can start picking it apart so like I have Wendy for resource management so I just use Zeph uh, anchor translator and I go into Zephyr Niu get nine pillars because I know he can't be over this because it's 2600 and if he can uh, with uh, like for example Dragite like I nine pillars Dragite so like I'm winning in this instance and I think I use yeah I use my Providence so I have two Zephyr Neves. He passes. And now, like, I feel like I have this. So I go, um, send Zephyr Saiton, normal Windy, add Zephyr Saiton, link in the IP Mascarena, summon Zephraxis, Zephyr Saiton, and Zephyr Neve, and Dark Worm. Now I'm gonna start winning. It took a while. I had to, basically, his board was insane. I had to systematically, like, deal with it. But he, ultimately, like, as I was withering it, he just like was like not having it and um, honestly if he kept his board he still wasn't gonna beat over the Zephyr Niu so like it's like he I feel like he felt like he had to do that but I don't know I would have just waited to see if I could um 
slowly summon Dragite under Winda, just slowly, and then try to out the board that way. It takes a longer, but because he tried to get really aggressive, he just got punished for it. So, like, you guys see my code now, like, there's no way I'm losing. I get, um, Oracle of Providence, I activate Providence, uh, to, I mean, I activate Providence to get Oracle. I add another Zephrat because I actually popped him. Yeah, I think I used, uh, Zephra, no, 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 what did I do? Oh, yeah, I used Saiton to pop the back row, which was the bluff, uh, Shadal Fusion. And then I summon Chao Feng with an Earth, so now he can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. I go Gallant Granite, because, um, what I did... Um, I used the Oracle to stack the Gizmet Kaku when I synchroed with Chao Feng. I thought about this, and then I'm like, I can XYZ, so I can draw this and discard it. But then I'm like, okay, but the only card in my hand is Anger Translator. So what I do is, I'm like, okay, I'm going to summon Gallant Granite then. So I summon Gallant Reason Beings, because I draw Kaku, keep him, discard Anger Translator, and then use Gallant to search another Anger Translator, so I keep the same card. So I literally, basically, in the line of play I'm doing, I searched Kaku directly from my deck to my hand. And I don't need Calamities, because Chao Feng's strong. I just put Kaku up so I can go into Access Go Talker. So you'll see. Summon Kaku. Go into Metaltron. Go into Access Code. Keep the Zephyr Niu for 9 pillars to be live. And then I start outing his board. Chao Feng triggers to summon Zephraxi, because like, Chao Feng's insane. And uh, I just deal with this board that way. I activate Anger Translator, pass. So now I have nine pillars plus Chao Feng. Uh, he's he's not gonna out this. Chao Feng beats this deck. Like that's one thing with us Zephras. We have like multiple win conditions. And he kills himself. Like I think he just didn't want me to beat him. And then game two. Game two. So like you know how game one, you guys. He played around the Biru in his own weird way. He summoned Arclight early. So I guess that made up for him using Researcher in the wrong order. In this duel, he got really confident. So press play. He opens with the way to outline a Biru. Which is like, okay, so like now I literally have two ways to bid in a gate. Oh, I'm top decking his Dark Roller no more. So actually, even if he stopped Nibiru, I win anyways, because I'm talk decking into Dark Roller no more. Now I know he doesn't play um, the Buster Lock. So I Dark Roller his board. And I have like legit full combo. And not only full combo, I can summon um, Calamities as well. So I can attack over his strongest monsters. Then I end on Calamities, Arc Light, Borload Savage, Counter Trap. Under Dark Roller. So he doesn't win this duel either way. So I think I body him whether he um, plays around the nib or not. But. It got way easier because, again, he did researcher like super, super early. I, I like I understand that um he has to normal guardian because I think he's scared of hand traps to do researcher, but for me, if I'm playing around hand traps instead of doing this because researcher is how you play around nib effectively, I would just normal analyzer, and to play around gamma or ogre I'd special seeker first. And then I declare Analyzer's effect. If I hit or miss, I use Seeker. Then I use Seeker after that. Whether I hit or miss, I go into Haku Fibrax. For me, that's a little bit better. Because also, whenever you're done with that, it's like you could do her last. Basically, I feel like no matter what, Researcher's always supposed to be last. Not first, not second. But pressing play, he doesn't whiff, I think. Yeah, I don't think he whiffs a single time. And he plays Sandman. Which is like, okay, he's playing more Kawaki Maros. But, like, he doesn't whiff, I think, because he plays so many rocks. Like, he's not playing, like, Unexpected Die or anything. He's doing combo now. Here's where he got a little confident. He goes Risen. I think he, uh, instead of picking the Guardian, he picks the Tackle. I would have I would have picked the Guardian. Personally, I would have picked the Guardian. Then he overlays to Gallant Granite. So, pause. So, to make sure that my opponent doesn't think I have Nib, because... It'll start asking once they hit five summons. I clicked ignore chain. And I was thinking, the moment I see an opportunity, I'm going to press always chain, which is an option in this uh, simulator, then activate him. So as soon as I seen him overlay his guardian for Gallant Granite, because like when I click ignore chain, it doesn't ask me. So when it doesn't say waiting to your opponent, your opponent, it looks like your opponent does not have any hand traps. So this is where he got way too confident. Like, cause oh, no matter what, he had to summon Gallant Granite because he felt like he needed Block Dragon. So like, those are the only level fours. But for me, I would have at least Synchro summoned into Borload Savage and just equipped the Hulk. 
because he had um, Raptite and the, both those level 2 tuners, I would have done that and put up a negate first before I went to Gallant, so that way I play around it, but because I clicked the North Chain and it looks like I have no hand traps, I think he just was like, he doesn't have a hand trap. And also keep in mind, he went full combo game one without a single interruption. He sees I'm playing pendulums, so maybe he thinks I don't play the right hand trap. I don't know, but he really, he got punished really hard. And this is where, again, that researcher not being used early would have made a difference, but Nib just did everything. But this is where I'm telling you guys right now, even if he negated the nib and played around it, I was top decking Dark Lord no matter what. And he doesn't have a negate for that. Matter of fact, let me check his extra deck. He doesn't even have a counter. Yeah, he doesn't have a counter for Dark Ruler. So, like, he was probably going to summon the same board he did last game, get Dark Rulered. And then I have this for Anger Translator, this for Zephraxi. And I start off with this first. I feel like I'd go um, normal righty first, go into Hulk do my combo oh yeah you guys are gonna see matter of fact because he didn't scoop i'm tripping so first thing play i flip nib i go optimus prime uh go oracle for anger translator then i normal right before anything else because i'm like if he has a hand trap i'll bait it right now bait the hand trap now because i have calamities this is like this is calamity so boom boom this is the standard combo as you guys are seeing like, I don't really have to explain it, I don't really, people just, again, they don't care too much about this stuff, so there's no point in really explaining it. So, I'm chain blocking with this in case there's an ogre. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so this was my misplay. Uh, not a misplay, I, actually, it was a misclick. That's the difference. Not like a little misplay, but a misclick. I clicked the wrong button right here, because I was trying to put up Savage, and then summon out Arclight. So, I'm trying to do Savage Arclight. And then I misclick into Chao Feng, which I'm like, dang, why'd I freaking do that? Like, oh. Uh. So then I summon Chao Feng with Borlo Savage, which is terrible because he doesn't get any effect because he's not made of Yang Zings. So now I'm vulnerable to if his one card's a hand trap. Um, but it's not. As a matter of fact, yeah. Dang. And then what is he top decking? He's top decking signs. So he's like, for me? That misclick, because it wasn't a misplay, it was a misclick, which it really sucks, because like, this is supposed to be Savage, Arclight, so Savage, Arclight, and then swap, after you Savage, Arclight, you activate, um, Providence for Zephraxi, yeah, for Zephraxi, no, 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 you activate Providence for Zephyr Niu, then you use Zephrath to go send Zephraxi, scale Zephyr Niu, and Anger Translator, obviously, Pendulum summon the Zephyr Niu, you search out Providence, the Zephraxi he sent, and you have Oracle up, you make um, Ravenous. So you're going to have Nibiru, Borlo Savage, Arc Light, Ravenous um, effect to stack Kaku. Let me see. It's somewhere in there. Anyways, so basically stack. Um, and also, I can make Calamities anyways, because now that I think of it, I could still just synchro with this and uh, the Chao, like synchro with him. And that into Chao Feng instead if I just really want to make calamities without Kaku. But either way, like I have combo and I have a counter trap, so I'm gonna end on like so many interrupts. And just in case I still have Dark Ruler, so press and play. So again, misclick, misclick into Chao Feng. You're supposed to click um Arc Light. Arc Light, not um Chao Feng, but it is a misclick. So I activate um Providence for the second Zephyr Niu. I go Anger Translator for um Oh that's what I do. I go into Thubin now. I go into Thubin, my bad. I was just talking about that, but I get rid of the Nib token. So I pop the Zephyr Niu, I get nine pillars, and I swing. So like, for me, I really don't like that I misclick because it changed a lot. So I just go into um, the nine pillars. And then now that I think of it, I think that in this game, I sided out Kaku. So the board on Sama, I couldn't end on the same one, but I could still end on Calamities with 9 Pillars because this, um, basically, I could send Zephraxi. But the other thing too is like the token stays there, it's still there and I have to find a way to out it. So like, I just outed the token and also I put him in a situation where if he top decks the um, Block Dragon, he's gonna basically have to um, commit like to be able to even get the Block Dragon off, which means if he links, he can't go into a Nightmare and discard to Chain Block because he literally has to use the card in his hand and a Block Dragon. And then I just 9 pillars the Block Dragon and he loses because like 9 pillars puts it back in the deck. So he's like back in the simplified game state. But 
he top decks into sign. So I'm gonna nine pillars analyzer. And um, I pop the Chao Fang from my misclick and I grab Ash Blossom off Chao Fang. So I pay for my mistake by just um, playing it that way instead. Instead of popping Zephyr Neo for a follow up, I get Ash just to make sure that he. Because look, if I didn't get Ash, it was gonna be a problem. So then um, he goes. So I play three signs on my list. I don't know why people think this card is bad. This card is insane. He goes signs into Raptite, puts Seeker on top, and <sighs> this is trouble if I didn't have the Ash because he could have literally. He has 10 cards in the extra deck, so he could still just like full combo me anyways, but whew, I did the right thing by searching that Ash. So I Ash the Raptite, he passes. I grab a Dubin off top deck, I banish lefty for righty. Go into Lambda to make it seem like I have Gamma. And then I just go Critical Mass, uh, Zephyr Nu, and then Dubin Chainlink 2, pop Raptite, banish Providence Protect, get Divine Strike, attack, and then that's game. Just in case, you know, you have the Divine Strike. So, that's game. Um, oh, this is against Plunder Patrol. This is... I was just talking about Plunder Patrol in one of my videos. So, I'm against Plunder Patrol. This is me. I have uh, Shrine. Dark... I think this is a different build. Matter of fact, this isn't the Synchro build. Dang. This is my old build. I can't even show that. Not my old build, but my other build. Um... Is this um, the Synchro build too? Let me see. This is another game against Adamance. Let me pause. Oh yeah, this is a Synchro build. So this is another duel against Adamance. This build's better, and I think the pilot is more competent. So press play. Uh, wait, let me pause. So like, you see my hand? I have Gamma, Ash, Windy, and Fraxy, and Divine Strike. He has Gamma, um, two of his three tuners. Doki and Pet, his hand is like kind of fire. So I pass. I don't even want to commit anything. And when I pass, he passes. So like he could normal Doki and like do a lot, but he just passes. I think cause he like dude, he wasn't a bad player. So I don't I don't know what his mindset was, but he just passes. I I'm not sure. Maybe he thinks I have like I don't know, like evenly in Ib or something. So now I'm comboing off because, like, I top deck in the Providence and then I go Anger Translator, Sin, uh, Zephyr New. So, um, I'm this is like a small mistake for me. I was trying to keep Windy in hand, that's what I was thinking. And then I'm like, oh no, uh, you can make Lambda and then Gamma's live. So I just searched like another trap off Zephyr New. But honestly, I want nine pillars. So, like, um, I was supposed to keep Windy in hand. Um, like which I really didn't appreciate not like doing so and then I go on um, Zephyr Nu because honestly by keeping Wendy in hand too when he gammas this I just normal summon her and then add him back anyways worst case scenario so he gamma Zephyr Nu so then I have to pay for that mistake by um crashing Wendy into driver which wouldn't have been possible if he didn't summon an attack but like he did that so now I have gamma ash and divine strike follow-ups with Zephyr anger translator so pressing play so I have three interrupts, but his hand is gas. So he goes special pet, no more Doki. Doki discard for cost, I ash the Doki. He goes reborn, target analyzer. Analyzer, I gamma it, cause that cuts off uh, at least the seeker. And now he has no choice but to researcher. I divine strike researcher, cause that also cuts off seeker and the, his tuner access. So this is all he'll have. And since he already normal summoned Doki, he has to pass. The only thing that will change is if he has a uh, block dragon, but with block dragon, the thing is he, I think he doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have exactly three earths, so he'd have to banish, like, if the last card in his hand was block dragon, he still would have to, like, link summon and then summon it, which, like, I think he could keep playing, but, like, that was very situational if he had it. Here's game two against Adamant. Whoops. There we go. Pause, swap. So this is my hand. I have uh, Oracle, Providence, Nine Pillars, Zephraxy, and Niu. So if I'm going first, this hand is insane. This hand is like Calamities, Double Counter Trap. Um, his hand is insane. <laughs> like he keeps opening insane. So press and play. <laughs> He's smart. He's playing around Gamma. He saw that I had Gamma, I think. Yeah, so. 
that's how you play around gamma. You summon seeker first before you do analyzer. Um, and then that way, if they gamma this, the analyzer, you still keep seeker. And then you have like tuner access off of uh, Gigantis for Hulk if this misses or gets ashed. It's so, like his hand is just really, really, really good. So, um, analyzer, it's just not really, really good. That's an exaggerated, but his hand is like he's playing through multiple interrupts. He summons Doki off analyzer, and then he goes seeker. I think he's gonna summon the guardian. That's a smart play, too. Hit the guardian. He goes in the Hulk, keeping the guardian up. This guy keeps his guardian up, and then he's doing standard combo. Since I don't have any hand traps, I'm just gonna go quick animations because Adamant Spider combos all kind of do look the same. The boards look the same. The last Adamant Spider player, I give him props. His boards are different. He played different extra deck cards. He played Winda, but this dude's doing like standard stuff. So we'll do like I'm just fast boarding it. Cause like you guys see, it's literally like the same. It's Savage, Arclight, Oppo. Like they always do the same stuff. Tackle Crusader. Then he summons a Researcher. See, he did it right. Researcher is like the last one you want to do. So he summons a similar board, but the difference is instead of Winda, he has um, the IP plus block. So <laughs> I'm really hoping that he negates Oracle because I drew into a second copy and I'm like, dang, I can at least. Bait to negates follow up with Providence and have something. So you'll see. I activate Oracle, he lets it resolve. I have Anger Translator, I know I'm a Fraxy. He goes into Unicorn, protect his Arc Light. Mm, mm, mm. And then I still, I'm trying, so then I activate Anger. Um, he Arc Lights it, then I activate Providence, he savages it. And then I surrender, because like even though I could set Night Pillars in this, he can just attack, 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 gain. So he got game two. Pause. Wait. Play. Pause. There we go. So you see his opening hand. Um, actually, his opening hand's good again. He has Adhar, Gigantes, Block. He keeps opening Block. Uh, bait. So like his hand is good actually. My hand is good too, and I think I'm going first. I have Shrine, Fraxy, Tuner Access. I hard drew Kaku, which means. Basically that um, the Ravenous gets to stack any hand trap and draw. So you guys are going to see my indie board. And I have Oracle. He has no hand trap, so I get to play Solitaire just like he did. So Oracle. Activate entry. So I'm trying to act like I have Gamma. So I'm not committing any monster yet. I'm trying to see if he'll hand trap me first. And then he doesn't. Like I'm trying to see if he'll Ogre. So I'm like, alright, cool. So then I draw. Now I drag and try. And then Gate 0. Then I'm summon Mew, Fraxy. Like honestly, um if I pin summon the Ash, like I go win more because I go um Borlo Savage, Arc Light, Calamities, and Counter Trap. Plus Nibiru. Yeah, that would be the ending board if I pin them summon the Ash. It's gonna be um Calamities, Borlo Savage, Arc Light, Counter Trap, and Nibiru. But the thing is like if he has Nibiru, I lose more because I pin summon Ash, so now I only have Counter Trap. But like this way, if he has Nibiru, I keep Counter Trap and Ash at least minimum. Because instead of going into Chao Fang, because going into Chao Fang plays around Nibiru, but it doesn't play around Kaijus. So it's like, in this instance, I'm playing around Kaijus instead of Nibiru. Because like at least with Nibiru, I don't lose completely. I still keep interruptions. But with like a kaiju, if I go into Chao Feng instead for a kaiju, then like I lose like a lot. Well, not like a lot, but I just prefer this play. I stack Nibiru and draw because I already opened Kaku. Then I overlay into True King of All Chlamydia. I activate Providence for Oracle, and then he surrenders. Um, so he was, I think, it's because he didn't have an out to. Oh, he's top decking another block. Yeah, he didn't have an out to Calamities. I obviously call Earth. I have Ash Counter Trap, and he saw me draw Nibiru, so like. He knows he's not winning, cause like he knows I have Divine Strike, he knows I have Nibiru, he knows I have Calamities. He doesn't know about the Ash, but I have like, this is insane. And that's also excluding the fact that I didn't go summon this out to turn this and this into Hulk and the Ardon um, combo, like to get Borla Savage and Arc, but still like, that was insane. So like you guys saw some good duels. Um, is this with the Synchro build? Nah, that's old. That's old. So yeah, you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, God bless you guys. I'm gonna stick with prayer, and then we gonna be out.
Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Jesus. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right, you guys. Peace out, yo.